welcome to Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja. Well, this is a show that focuses on providing you with solutions to your health-related issues, lifestyle, and much more. Well, viewers, it seems like the number of kids with allergies is increasing. So what are the symptoms and also childhood asthma is the most common serious chronic disease in infants and children. Well, viewers, to discuss on these topics, we are joined today in studio, Dr. Nayan Muni Deka. He's a pediatrician from Pratiksha Hospital. So not to waste any more time, I'll straight away move to him and talk more on the topic topics which we have taken. So doctor, welcome to Good Life, the health show. It's a privilege to have you in our show once again. Okay. So today the topics which we have taken, we can say that it's about childhood allergies and also about asthma. So first of all, we'll start with allergies. Okay. So common form of childhood allergies, what can that be? See, uh, <coughs> there are lots of childhood allergy. We used okay. to say lots of cases. Hmm. Allergy means is a type 1 hypersensitive reaction to okay. some common environmental allergens. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, it might be manifestation of different types of diseases. Number one, okay. it might be a uh, childhood atopic dermatitis, like some childhood uh, eczema. Okay. okay. Secondly, it might be some uh, childhood allergic rhinitis. Hmm. And third most important point is that it is childhood asthma. Okay. Along with them, some other skin manifestations of some, sometimes like acute urticaria. That is also one form of childhood allergy. Okay. So, these are basically broad three important uh, uh, types of allergy. One is childhood. Uh, eczema, that mm. is atopic dermatitis. Okay. Second one is related to nose, that is allergic rhinitis. Mm. And third most important thing is that is mm. the childhood asthma. So these okay. are three most important okay, allergic okay. conditions. And how common are these allergic diseases in children, doctor? Yeah, see, uh, previously we used to see very less cases of yeah. these uh, allergic cases. Mm. But uh, uh, in the last decade, uh, this last decade, we have seen lots of cases of allergic disorders, mm. specifically uh, this uh, eczema, uh, mm. rhinitis, and asthma. Uh, so, uh, now it is very much common, almost one in every five cases we used to see, uh, almost one in ten cases we used to see lots of allergic problem. It's mm. coming up right now because of changes of lifestyles, because of changes of environmental uh, uh, pollutions okay. and all these are related to this increased tendency of this. Uh, uh, okay. this uh, conditions allergy condition okay okay yeah. okay in between in between our conversation i would like to tell the viewers of good life the health show that our numbers are flashed on your television screens so if you have any queries on what kind of allergies if any kind of like allergies has been faced by your children so our doctor is here in our studio so the numbers are flashed on your television screen so you can call up and ask your questions and you will get all your answers all right coming back to you doctor again yes. you mentioned about like these are the kind of like childhood uh, allergies which is seen in most of the cases. So, how frequent we can say or what are the figures if we talk about the figures mm. in children, okay. what would you tell on that? So, it depends. Uh, see, we used to say around uh, atopic dermatitis, the childhood eczema, mm. around uh, 5 to 10 percent of uh, children used to have this one, uh, okay. this childhood uh, eczema that mm. is called atopic dermatitis. It is a kind of itchy lesion, it's in dry skin conditions. Okay. Uh, specifically occurs in particular locations uh, in a child okay. and that is uh, most one of the most common form of allergy mm. and it is the earliest manifestation of this um, uh, allergy. And mm. uh, if you see allergic rhinitis, it is also common around 5 to 6 percent uh, children of this uh, in our country used to have this problem. And childhood asthma is another biggest problem in our country. Around uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 15 percent children used to have this childhood asthma. Not only asthma, okay. related to some childhood wheezing mm -hmm. and other conditions are related to this uh, uh, figure. Mm -hmm. So, if we talk about the increasing figures, what could be the reason for this? Was is it like the weather conditions or the climate change or the hygiene maintenance yes, yes. of the children? So, what could be the major reasons and the basic reasons? So the uh, number one important uh, reason is the change of lifestyles. Change of okay. lifestyles. Yeah, change okay. of lifestyles. Uh, we used to follow some Western Western lifestyles. That might be one one cause. Hmm. Number two important point is the pollutions. Pollution. Hmm. Uh, this exhaust diesel diesel exhaust particles okay. and lots of environmental pollutions increased constructions and all hmm. that that might be important uh, uh, important pointer for this uh, development of allergy childhood allergy hmm. and some pollens and all and hmm. some uh, some sort of uh, other other conditions like uh, sometimes this lots of urbanizations mm -hmm. from rural, rural development hmm. and some other uh, thing is that one hygiene hypothesis that hmm. that uh, that is because of increased cleanliness that might lead to some sort of allergic disorders which can be treated at yeah. home as well yes sir hmm. and increased cleanliness may might lead to this allergic disorders that hmm. is it, it might change from infection to allergic conditions okay that is called hygiene hypothesis okay yeah, so if you need to tell the parents like how to maintain the hygiene of your children okay. and like how to take care of their lifestyle what they are leading towards okay. so what would you tell to them 
So, thing is that uh, some important uh, if we consider some allergens, the those might be uh, indoor allergens or those might be outdoor allergens. Hmm. So, what are the indoor allergens? Okay. So, indoor allergens are basically most important thing is the house dust mite. Hmm. So, nowadays we used to use lots of uh, carpets, hmm. lots of curtains, okay. some sofas. Okay. Uh, these uh, some uh, cushions and all, all these are important harbors of this house dust mite. That is an okay. organism basically, okay. and that causes lots of sensitivity to children. Okay. So, uh, in the important, most important thing is that we have to reduce the concentration of this house dust mite. So, how okay. can we decrease the house dust mite concentration? Mm -hmm. The first and foremost thing is there uh, we have to reduce the carpets. Basically, those carpets, mm -hmm. no, we used because of the, some uh, mm -hmm. we used to the things decorate. Things which are not yeah. uh, like cleaned every day. Yeah, so not you have to be days. very yes. careful yeah. with those because some children's you need to see that they are just playing yes. around there. Yes, yes. Hmm. That then curtains and all mm -hmm. those sofas and all whatever minimal furnitures with uh, clean cleanliness is very important. And we we'll have to decrease the uh, decrease the humidity of the environment. Okay, mm -hmm. if the humidity is more, mm -hmm. those uh, house dust mites used to grow faster. Okay. Okay. And that um, this washing of clothes mm. in a uh, hot water mm -hmm. around more than 60 degrees centigrade, okay. almost uh, once or twice in a month. That is very important. And can and use some kind of like antiseptics also in yes, while washing clothes. Yeah, we, they, they can use and mm. some uh, some vacuum cleaner also they can they can use some mm. HEPA filters, some mm. house dust mite preventing encasing materials are there that can okay. be used. The second important thing of indoor in the allergen is moles. Mm -hmm. so some fungal in those fungal elements are there. Mm. So we will have to see the condition of the house. If it is damp house, mm. if it is some leaky house, mm. those are the important uh, source that might lead to increased growth of these moles. Okay, okay. And so that and has to be reduced. Right, right. Uh, and the things which you are saying, it's very easy and yeah. it's very basic things yeah, which is very much available yes, yes, at home and yes. one can do it very easily yes. and doesn't have to like think about, uh, give a second yeah. thought on that, yes, isn't it, doctor? Yes. So what more you want to add on the that? Pets and all some uh, house indoor pets like cats and dogs, if hmm. their uh, child is very much sensitive to that one, we might, we might have to avoid that part, okay? Hmm. Regarding some outdoor allergens like some mm -hmm. pollutions like so diesel exhaust particles, if the uh, some uh, in during some uh, windy air, windy mm -hmm. conditions, pollen concentration is very high. So right. in that condition, child has to be taken away from that atmosphere. He has to be stay indoor, okay. Mm -hmm. And some uh, uh, during the season of pollination, where there are lots of pollens, they, then child's condition become ex ag aggravated. Oh, so okay. those are the situations where you can keep the child away from those conditions, mm -hmm. okay. So okay. So that child can suffer mm. uh, less from mm -hmm. these allergic and conditions. And is immunity also a part of like uh, getting them into more prone into these kind of diseases? Yes, yes, if a child yes. is not that immune, yes. symptom is not that strong. Yeah. So immunity, if he is too much in a safe passage also, but yes. still he is prone to those diseases. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that's immunity okay. is a very uh, playing yeah. a very important role because uh, we have some. Uh, innate immunity, some acquired immunities are there. Mm. Some uh, infections my, uh, changes the immunity to one way, and other uh, infec infections changes the immunity to other way. Okay. It is some uh, in medical terms it is called Th1 or Th2 type of Th1, uh, Th1 T2 okay. type of this uh, immunity. Mm. So in allergic condition, what it is shifting from Th1 to Th2. Oh, okay. That is uh, some. If, if, if the child is kept very uh, clean, very clean also, mm. it is less less infections, less source of infections that. It is shifting. It is shifting towards the hmm. TH2 type. That is, okay. might develop more uh, these allergic manifestations. Okay, that is okay. Important. So this is also one kind of like, and yes. these are medical terms which usually parents doesn't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. So suppose some kind of like patients or the children's parents comes to you. Is it difficult to make them understand that you don't have to worry for your children because like they are suffering from these kind of diseases because parents are more confused and uh, they are more worried about their children because if they get a lot of like sneezing also, yeah. they get a lot of like tension. Okay. So on that note, what do you tell the parents that you need not to worry? You have to go with the proper medicines mm, yes. and then how you take care of them? It depends upon the uh, situation. It depends mm. upon the clinical symptoms, how severe the symptom is. Okay. So you have to grade the symptoms. As per that, if the symptoms are very much mild up upon grading, mm. so you can give some SOS medications whenever required. If the symptoms are moderate to severe manifestations, suppose allergic rhinitis, it is moderate to severe or asthma, it is moderate to severe grade. So in that condition, you might have to use some medications for longer durations. Okay. You cannot uh, you cannot assure that the, it can be cured 100%, mm -hmm. but you can tell them that if you are taking this medicine very regularly, it can be well controlled. That okay. is very important. So mm -hmm. that quality of life become in, improved. That mm -hmm. is That is our main idea. 
Okay, okay. And how do you tell them to avoid these kind of allergies? Like what are the, what are the basic, the first and foremost thing you tell the parents? Like you have to do this. You tell them to clean your house and yes. you tell them, them how to maintain the hygiene. Okay. But whenever they come to you, what is the first thing you tell them? So the first thing you, uh, thing is that the parents are very much apprehensive. Hmm. First, you have to counsel them hmm. regarding LRZ. That's if, more important. Yeah, that's more important. Counsel them. You have to assure them that even if it is not completely cured, it is 100% hmm. controllable. Okay. Hmm. So that is the main thing, so that it can boost their uh, more uh, this, uh, the uh, thinking regarding this uh, disease. Okay. Okay. And so after that, counseling all this number hmm. important thing is the allergen avoidance measures. So hmm. what allergen avoidance measures you can take? Hmm. So whatever I have explained previously to you, uh, some regarding some basic 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 things, hmm. not not very high uh, okay. uh, these things, hmm. only basic things uh, re regarding the house dust mite control, hmm. pollen control, mold controls, how you can do. Mm -hmm. And then pharmacotherapy, these okay. medications you can mm -hmm. ask. And after that, if we, in spite of taking medications, mm -hmm. after taking uh, allergen avoidance, mm -hmm. some other modes of therapies are there, you can offer them. Okay. And uh, what is the number of patients they come to you regarding these allergies? Uh, how what kind of numbers do you see every day? Yeah. Is it like more or it's becoming less? It's, and what kind no, of like guidance it's, it's, you it's give? It's gradually them? increasing. If you see it's that, gradually increasing. Yeah, it's, uh, if you see that trend in last 10 years, no, mm. it's not gradually. I, I, I want to say it's rapidly increasing for last 10 years. Okay. Initially it was gradually increasing but in last 10 years we have seen, seen the trends. Okay. It's uh, increasing very rapidly. Okay. In, uh, both in the developing countries as well as the developed countries. It's very okay. increasing. Okay. In developed countries, situation is more worse than these developing countries. Okay, okay. And just between our conversation, just to tell our viewers once again that our numbers are flashed on your television screens and we are having an important topic discussion that is allergies in the childhood and what kind of like allergies your children can may be prone to. So what you have to do on that? What are the symptoms? So if you have any questions regarding the topic, the numbers are flashed on your television screens. So you can call up and ask your questions. You will get all your answers as the doctor is just now present in our studio. So, doctor, coming back to you again, we were talking about allergies. So, if we talk about which is the main, uh, which is the basic allergy is seen in every children, eczema you were talking yeah. about. Mm. So, what kind of like uh, eczema you were telling about? See, eczema means it is uh, one, uh, basically it's a uh, continuation of continuation of disease. Mm -hmm. And the one important thing is if your family member is having this problem, okay, that child is more prone to develop this so allergy. You can say it's genetic. Yeah, it's, okay. the genetics definitely play mm. big role. Okay. okay? Mm. But not uh, all atopic, that is all sensitive individual might not develop allergy mm. because gene has to be interacted with this environment. Okay. Not only genes, mm. but both genetic part and environmental interaction has to be there. Mm. Then and then only manifestation of disease will be there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you see uh, uh, if you see a parent, mm. in a, in a one single one mother or father, mm. if uh, he has got uh, allergic manifestation, mm. then the child might uh, increase uh, chance for 30 to 40 percent. But if okay. both parents used to have this mm. disease, 60 to 70 percent. Okay. See how much gene has played a role in this part. Mm. So, uh, this most commonest form of the allergic manifestation I have told mm -hmm. you during the early childhood, it is the Okay. Atopic dermatitis, that is mm -hmm. eczema, mm -hmm. that is commonly. It, okay. is, uh, it is a basically dry skin ah. and itchy lessons itchy, are there and basically there. involving some some uh, aspects in the forearm, sometimes in the mm -hmm. uh, back of the knee mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some sometimes in the face. So those are the common areas, mm -hmm. those are very itchy lessons, red lessons and uh, that is the one of the most commonest form of uh, uh, allergic manifestations. Okay. After that, if the cell outgrow this one, mm -hmm. that cell might go into allergic rhinitis. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so he might outgrow that problem Ancha. within two to three hours, mm -hmm. but he will march into another problem that oh, is okay. atopy, uh, allergic rhinitis. Okay. Doctor, we have a phone call, so yeah. let's take okay. that phone okay. call. Okay. Uh, hello, who's calling? Uh, hello, I am Namrata from Belkala. Yes, Actually, Namrata. I, yeah, I have a question. Uh, how can I tell the difference between allergies and a cold? Allergic cold? No, no. How can I tell the difference between allergies and cold? Okay, difference between allergies and cold. Uh, is yes, this, uh, uh, my, my baby's age is uh, four years. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this okay. It's quite simple. Allergy is a basically a, uh, it is a hypersensitivity reaction. And cold is not a hypersensitivity reaction. Mm -hmm. In allergy, there is some inflammation and that is mediated by one antibody, that is IG mediated. Okay. But cold is not an IG mediated in uh, this one. Mm. Sometimes if there is congestion mm. um, uh, because of some environmental change of temperature and all, you might develop cold. Okay. But for having allergic rhinitis, you will have to fulfill some criteria. Okay. That means 
you will have to an IG mediated inflammation plus there is some important pointers. Number one is you will have to have repeated attacks of sneezing. Hmm. Number two, uh, you might have some pruritus that is some itching over the nose okay. and there is nasal block. So those are important pointers and if, if you have some early morning sneezing repeatedly, regularly hmm. Hmm. or in some particular season, hmm. those are allergic entities. But if it is because of some uh, cold or change of uh, temperature, if it is developing, mm -hmm. that is simple common cold. That okay. is m most of the children used mm -hmm. to have, or uh, you or me also used to suffer from this one. That okay. is common cold. Mm -hmm. But uh, for being uh, uh, reported as allergic anitis, you have to fulfill some criteria. Like those common, mm -hmm. it has to be repeatedly present, okay. not in a uh, particular season. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be continuously present, like uh, uh, mm -hmm. sneezing, itching, mm -hmm. this uh, the nasal discharge, nasal blockade. Mm -hmm. Those are important points has to be there. Then okay. and then only you can label it as allergic rhinitis. Okay. And along and with that, some hmm. typical history, family history. Ah. Family history is there. Okay. Or some other form of allergic manifestation in the side. If anyone might in have. the family is yeah. facing these kind of yeah. problems, yeah. so we have to give a check on that yes, as well. Yes, yes. So children can also may face or may not face. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they are in some other substances. And if doctor, if they find out some other symptoms also, they, they can go and anytime see a pediatrician and yes. they will get a clear cut answer. It's better to get a proper answer mm. than having confusions in their mind, isn't okay. it? Yeah. So, doctor, we were talking about about the allergies. Mm. So if we talk about this eczema, so mm. what are the treatment regarding this and how do you tell oh, this, to treat? Uh, that uh, one point I was telling that hmm. it's MERS, MERS it's from uh, uh, this one atopic dermatitis to uh, this one, allergic rhinitis. Hmm. And if it is not well treated, that allergic rhinitis style might develop into allergic asthma. Asthma, okay. So these are some it, there's some relations between mm -hmm. these conditions. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to treat every condition at okay, every okay. proper it's, state. Everything is related. Yeah, it's related. Hmm. So. Uh, so that's why. So you, you were telling what regarding treatment of uh, this one. Mm. So the most important thing is the uh, in case of eczema is the mm. this dry skin. Dry skin. So that has to be taken care of very. Mm -hmm. uh, and as winter is approaching. Yeah, so it's very. Uh -huh. So dry skin emollients and moisturizer is very much important. Mm. So how will we apply moisturizer? That is very important thing. Okay. So how will we apply moisturizer after taking a normal lukewarm water bath hmm. before drying the uh, immediately you will have to apply the moisturizer okay. in the whole body hmm. adequately you will have to apply not okay. some like, in the scattered you will mm -hmm. apply adequately in the whole body mm -hmm. and just immediately after rubbing this uh, with cloth mm -hmm. and immediately apply not after okay. 30 minutes after one hour like that okay. and in, in that situation that the uh, skin will hold this one moistures okay? okay otherwise okay. if you are applying later on no mm -hmm. that, it will become yeah. it won't make it, it won't, uh, yeah, any won't. difference okay number uh, two important thing is the less use of soaps and oh, detergents okay. that is mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. soaps because we if you are using re regularly some soaps mm -hmm. so that will uh, damage your make superficial skin surface. layers mm -hmm. yeah so that's why uh, very less use of soap Okay. And even if you were required to use soap, hmm. sometimes weekly or twice weekly, some synthet bars are there okay. that balance the uh, normal pH of the skin. So hmm. that has that can be used. Okay. And what about those uh, like body wash and all nowadays? It's very much like in. Hmm. So do you uh, suggest the parents to be used for their children, or what kind of like no. suggestions you would tell them? Uh, we always advise mm -hmm. to use less uh, this soap and um, hmm. uh, detergents and all. Okay. And even if you require, it is some synthet bars. Okay. Synthet bars hmm. that uh, I have already told, told you that regarding pH. Okay. That pH has to be same with the skin. So that's pH. easily available. Yeah. Hmm. The third important thing is that regarding wear of clothes. Mm -hmm. So the soft cotton clothes that is very important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes woolen, sometimes mm -hmm. um, uh, nylon mm -hmm. clothes, and all mm -hmm. that that might cause damage to this mm -hmm. one. We have seen that like, like many of the parents, if they go to any of the functions, or they, we have seen some of the kids yes. wearing such heavy kind of clothes, yes, yes, yes. and they are not comfortable in those yes, clothes. Yes, so yes. what would you suggest to them? I'm <laughs> sure the mothers who are your fathers who are watching our show, I must your children are not much comfortable with those clothes, especially in the seasons which they should not wear yes, it. Yes, in yes. summers we see them wearing such heavy yeah. clothes. So what would you suggest them that you have to take care of your children because it's hampering their skin, yeah. it's maybe they will be allergic yes. or something yes, like yes, that. Yes. If, if there is strong history, huh. if a strong family history, if there is mm. strong family history or uh, if there is history of this uh, allergic condition, definitely we will have to avoid that one mm. because uh, that will aggravate the condition and right. if, uh, if, uh, if mm. aggravation is for there for a single time, mm. that will again persist for another uh, two to three, three weeks. That will again increase this uh, problem. So that's why mm. better to avoid those pro if, if the child is having uh, a definite history of these allergic conditions. Okay. So we are talking about allergies. So there are some kind of food allergies also. Yes. Some children are not prone to such kind of foods. Yes. And if they eat also, they get some kind of allergies. So mm. what would you tell on that? Food allergies, if we talk on that. Yes. There is uh, basically two terms on food allergy uh, mm. and what is food intolerance. Mm. So allergy is different, intolerance is different. Mm. So we can label it as food allergy if 
after within two hours of taking the food, hmm. the child is symptomatic. Okay. So then we can label it as food allergy. So mm -hmm. what will be the symptoms? Basically, some immediately after taking, hmm. child might develop uh, diarrhea, hmm. might develop vomiting, hmm. some rashes over the skins. Mm -hmm. So those are important points. Mm -hmm. So. So that uh, most of the parents used to tell that the child is allergic to this one. It's yeah. not like that. Hmm. Maybe so once or twice yeah, something maybe is intolerant, happening. But, but if it is happening frequently, frequently then? Frequently, yeah. Okay. It, it, has a persistent, it has to be persistently present. Hmm. So hmm. most commonly um, uh, encountered uh, this food allergens is basically hmm. uh, cow's milk. Hmm. Cow's milk, hmm. uh, egg, egg, peanut, mm -hmm. soy protein, hmm. wheat. Those okay. are most important, vulnerable. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why we, what we advise. Mm. Uh, we uh, don't uh, allow them to allow the child to take cow's milk up to mm. one year. Okay. If possible, if there is mm. strong family history, we can ask them to avoid up to two years. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, egg also like that, egg protein after, mm. uh, suppose uh, egg white, we used to ask them to take after one year. Okay. So uh, some peanuts, mm -hmm. one or two years, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so, a between of a gap. Yeah, mm. not immediately. Mm -hmm. Not immediately. So. Uh, but if the strong family history is there, better to avoid those uh, products even mm. up to two years. Okay. Okay. Mm. And talking about these milk, cow yeah. milk, which you were talking about, yes. and also the normal milk, which we are talking about. Mm. If suppose like some nowadays are feeling allergic about this lactose-free milk. Yes. So these, this thing is very much in these mm -hmm. days. So mm. do you also get cases, some of that, no, like we, my children is not able to take milk because he is not, uh, uh, maybe his stomach is upset or yes. something like that. Yes. Lactose intolerance is quite uh, not uncommon, it's mm -hmm. common. We used to see mm -hmm. uh, lactose intolerance after diarrhea, that okay. is transient lactose intolerance. But uh, in certain conditions, some, uh, uh, some problems are there. In that conditions, like some uh, metabolic conditions like mm -hmm. galactosomianol mm -hmm. and sometimes a primary enzyme deficiency, in that mm -hmm. cases also used to get lactose intolerance. Oh, okay. So in those conditions, sometimes we might have to go for lactose-free formula. Okay. Even we'll have to st stop the mother's mm -hmm. milk also. Th okay. those At least we had some basic knowledge about these allergies and yes. what kind of symptoms and yeah. what kind of things can be done. If we talk about the asthma, because that is also an important topic yes. and you said that it's related. Yeah. Everything is related. Yes, yes. So first of all, just a basic information for the viewers. What is asthma yes. and how it can like uh, make a problem for your children? Asthma is basically like, it's a chronic disease. Hmm. This chronic disease involving the our airway. Okay. So in that condition, what happened? This our airway is swollen mm. in a simple language. Mm. It is inflamed mm. and it becomes narrowed. Okay. So that's what happened. Uh, this limitations of this airflow. So in that condition, silent will manifest as either breathing difficulty, cough, wheezing. Those mm. are the important manifestations. Okay. Mm. So this asthma basically uh, in a child in a child. Uh, it's a very common. Hmm. So uh, previously, uh, whatever people uh, they didn't like to tell that my child is having this this hmm. problem hmm. because hmm. of some myths and misbeliefs. Yeah, okay? yeah. Hmm. Those are there. Hmm. But this uh, we used to see lots of cases of asthma. Not only asthma, some early wheezer. Hmm. Sometimes some of the children are in our infancy hmm. or up to two three years. Hmm. That might be some manifestation of some viral in, uh, viral illness also. Okay. After some viral infection, hmm. child is too having some breathing difficulty or wheezing like that. Mm -hmm. And they used to overcome after mm -hmm. few. And uh, it's so difficult for the children to make out because yeah. they can't tell you anything yes, yes, that yes. I'm feeling these kind yes, of problems yes. and they are in that suffering. Yes, yes. So in that mode of time, a parent is, has to play an important role yes, in that. Yes. So if you find any kind of like signs and mm -hmm. symptoms. Mm -hmm. So now if we talk about the signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. like how a challenge parents can make out in their children that they are getting prone to asthma or maybe a some okay. kind of like mm. disease like that. Uh, this, uh, that again come to the point the strong family history. Strong that is very important. History. Okay. We we'll have to ask always the strong family history. Mm -hmm. If there is strong family history mm -hmm. and under the back of that with history of repeated cuffs mm -hmm. and um, uh, not relieving by uh, taking some antibiotics but okay. even if relieve also after 7 or 10 days it will take. Mm -hmm. Most of the uh, doctors used to prescribe some antibiotics mm -hmm. and after 7 days they used to get relief. Again mm -hmm. they will uh, having okay. the, they'll be having the same problem, same cough. Problem. Okay. Sometimes night coughs. Hmm. Sometimes if it is uh, a bit older children, they will say 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 tightness, hmm. breathing difficulty. They can okay. say. But if it is younger younger child, some uh, children used to have this hmm. increased respiration. Okay. There is increased respiration. There is some indrawing of the chest. Okay. There is some wheezing sounds. Okay. So those are the important while sleeping. While okay. sleeping, yeah. Hmm. Uh, decreased feeding. Those hmm. are some important um, uh, signs okay. that child might have, and from that uh, we can make out that child might develop some sort of wheezing disorders. Maybe asthma also. Maybe mm -hmm. some early wheezer also. Hmm. And if it is early wheezer, 
they used to overgrow over mm -hmm. time. Okay. But if it is in a background of strong family history mm -hmm. with persistent symptoms, even after five, three or five years, mm -hmm. then we might label them as asthma. Okay, okay. And you were talking about some of kind of myths because like people, they don't believe to tell everyone that yeah. their children are facing with yes, asthma. Yes. So what would you tell on that and the using of inhalers as yes, well? Yes, yes. So what would you tell on that? The myths, uh, that, is, that is the most important, uh, important thing. Mm. Uh, and it's a, most, uh, what I say, it's a hindrance mm. in asthma management. Okay. okay. The most important thing is if, if you utter the word asthma, immediately the um, uh, parents will tell us, no, my child is not having uh -huh, asthma. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. because so what could be the reason? Like why do, why do they not tell clearly or they are not open up about the topic? Yes, thing is that they used to think it as a contagious disease. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they, they will think that uh, if my child is having asthma, I will mm -hmm. tell like asthma. Mm -hmm. So uh, this might... Maybe uh, when he goes to school, school and all, then uh, or other or parents or, will not yeah, allow, allow the other to, children yeah, to mingle yeah. with him. They, they will okay. think, they, they think that they, it's a contagious, contagious disease, number one. That is mm -hmm. the very important important one. Mm. And so, so is their, it contagious doctor? For their information, I am mm. telling you, it's not mm. at all contagious. Okay, so I'm telling the viewers, uh, as doctor has clearly mentioned it, asthma is not at all contagious. So if your children is facing with that, open up and talk about that. And for that, our numbers are flashed on your television screens and you can call up and ask if your children is facing with asthma, if any of the near and dear ones is facing with asthma. So you don't have to worry for that because treatments are there and we are having a discussion and conversation on that with Dr. Nayan Mani Dekasa. Coming back to you, doctor, yes. again. The uh, second important point is they will think that uh, mm. it will hamper their day-to-day -day life, right. their school performance, it will hamper. Mm. But it's not like if you see some big shots, you see some, uh, uh, this Amitabh Bachchan is having asthma. Mm. He's mm. on regular medications. Mm. He's taking a healthy life. He's mm. leading a healthy life. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our, uh, our Priyanka Sapra mm -hmm. is having, uh, she's having this asthma. Mm -hmm. She's on regular inhaler. Mm -hmm. She's doing fine. So those mm. are important examples mm -hmm. we can uh, so to parents yeah. and they, they can also see see how healthy life they are taking. Mm -hmm. And regarding uh, use of inhalers, mm. the most important myths they used to uh, feel is that it's, uh, it will have some addiction. Mm. Even if you tell them, mm. they will always, ref most of the parents will re refuse to take these inhalers in an early phase. Mm. But after suffering a lot, they will accept that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, for their inf information, I will tell you that mm. it doesn't have any addi addiction property. Okay. Inhalers are very much safe, hmm. so you can take it very uh, well, uh, with proper prescription. You can take it very well, no problem. And this, regarding inhalers, the most important thing is whatever medications we have used in inhalers. Okay. So that medication is directly going to the lung. Hmm. So the, their systemic side effects are less. Hmm. So that is very important message for them. Okay. That is, whatever medicines we are providing, that will go directly to the lung. Hmm. Okay. And if you take orally. So, mm. it will go into whole systems. Okay. And number two important point is the dose. The mm. whatever doses we are giving through inhalers mm. is very less. It is in microgram dose. Okay. And whatever medicines you are taking by orally mm. is in milligram dose. It is okay. it makes thousand times more than the whatever dose you are taking. Mm -hmm. So, that is most important. So, mm -hmm. you have to stick that one. So, this dose is less. Side effects are less. Mm. There is no addiction, so why are you, uh, why are you worrying, uh, about uh, worrying about this mm -hmm. taking inhalers? Mm -hmm. That is very important. That's what. Yeah. And uh, like uh, taking inhalers in the initial stage, is it precaution? Precaution is given that, or what would you suggest that inhalers should be taken when it is like apart, the disease yeah. is apart? Inhaler is supposed to, against depend on the symptom severity mm -hmm. and quality of life. Mm. If sim we'll have to grade those severities. Okay. If it is mild form, mm. you might not require any inhalers. Okay. So, mm. if the symptoms are persistently pleasant, present, mm. the grades of severity is more, mm. we'll have to continue with that medicines. Okay. And whatever thing the parents used to do is that mm. if, if you prescribe an inhaler, mm. after a few days or a few months, mm. if the child is well, no, mm. they'll stop that medicine immediately. Mm. That should not be done. That should not be. That is the okay. most important mm -hmm. message. Inhaler has to I be continued. Until you had a word with yeah. the doctor. On, uh, you, you might be symptomatically well, but mm. the inflammation is there inside, the, inside your lung. Ah. That has to be controlled. Mm. So that's why. Uh, it has to be continued for a longer period and okay. you'll have to be symptom free for a few months, even three to six months. Mm. If you are symptom free for a few months, mm. then we might decide to taper the dose. Okay. Gradually we will taper mm -hmm. the dose and mm. in a low dose we might maintain it for a long time. Okay. And in low mm -hmm. dose it is very much safe. 
and if you say that uh, inhalers are basically steroid inhalers. Okay. So if you uh, utter the word steroid, no, mm -hmm. they used to fear. You yeah. I am, my cell is getting That's steroids. The way. If you have lack of information, yeah. lack of knowledge, then things will be more confused for you. Yeah. So it's better like whenever you have any kind of confusion, you should always see a doctor and get yes. a clear, proper consultation, and yes. then you do things what you want to do. So mm -hmm. doctor will have the discussion, okay. but on that note, we'll have to slip into a short break. So viewers will slip into a short break, but do come back soon as we have lots more on the other side. Welcome back, viewers. You're still watching Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja, and I'm joined by Nainmuni Deka. And straight away, I'll move to him and talk more on the topic which we have taken today. So, doctor, coming back to you again, we were talking about asthma, which is a myth. People doesn't come up uh, clearly and they don't don't talk like uh, openly. So, what would you like to tell the parents that mm. you should come up with whatever problems your children is facing and if you find any kind of signs and symptoms. So, if any kind of like parents comes to you, what kind of consultation do you give to them? Okay, <clears throat> thing is that uh, parents mostly, uh, most mm. of the parents used to come that mm. my cell used to cough, 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 cough a lot. Cough, cough, okay. Uh, that is most important. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, night time cough a lot, mm. later we cell is well. Mm. And um, uh, that uh, local doctors used to give some, uh, um, uh, some antibiotic course and mm. used to get uh, relief. Okay. And after a few days, again cell used to have this problem. Okay. Doctor, we'll talk on that. We have a phone call. Okay. okay. Uh, hello, who's calling? स्किन लेयार्स भी लग डैमेज हो जाए कारण एक बार ऐसा खोजोटी हवा पड़े किसी दिन और कारण है अपने एक बारे सिंधा कोई बना लगे लेक्टो कला में ना थोका लोशन्स किसी में लगा ले स्किन और लगा ले अपना एक हम इसे तो ऊपर आप हम पावो दो ही तीन ही हफ्ता कंटिन्यू लगा ले अपना ऊपर हम पावो सिंधा कोई बना लगे तो कारण Okay, so yeah. that is a very kind of like yeah. it's very easily available yes, and yeah. they can yeah. only apply at home. Yeah. But if it finds that something is like more increasing, yeah. then they can yeah. come and see yes. a pediatrician, isn't yes. it? Yes. So, doctor, we were talking about asthma and mm. we were talking about whenever parents comes to you, they talk about cough. Mm. Okay, so, so what they say? So that uh, that is the most important point that you need to take. Mm. That is, child is having repeated cough. Huh. So it's not like some bacterial infection or some viral infections. Mm -hmm. Child is having some other problems. So. Mm. So, if you, you are thinking that cell might have the, might, might be a candidate for asthma, hmm. so in that case, you will again come back, hmm. you have to ask the history. Okay. In history, you have to ask the hmm. family history. Hmm. Family history. Family is not in the father or mother, even the grand, grandmother, grand, grandparents, you have to ask. Okay. So, anybody um, in your family having, don't, hmm. uh, don't ask like the, uh, anybody in your family having asthma, hmm. they will immediately tell, no, hmm. no, nobody, hmm. nobody is having asthma. Maybe some might not know <laughs> It might not know uh -huh. also, or uh, for uh, some uh, these reasons I have already, already explained, they might hmm. tell that this, no, nobody hmm. is having asthma. But if, if you can ask, if, if, does anybody in your uh, family having some itchy nose, mm -hmm. continuous running nose, some skin lessons, mm -hmm. or having night cough, mm -hmm. or having some taking some inhalers and all. Okay. It will be some uh, some mm -hmm. uh, this some uh, kind of uh, like these kind of questions, questions can be asked. And uh, you might uh, get a very good history. Mm -hmm. And on the back of that, that is you can elicit the history of atopy. That is mm -hmm. some genetic factor okay. is uh, taking part in this condition. So mm -hmm. that is very important. So you are taking care of this. Oh, some uh, might he might might be a candidate for asthma. Mm -hmm. So after that, you will have to ask the history if the night cough is more. Hmm. Suppose child is coughing at night, hmm. that is very important. Nocturnal cough is typical of asthma. The, in hmm. daytime, asthma cough is less, okay. but nighttime cough is more. more. That is very important. Okay. If, if um, uh, parents are hearing some wheezing sound from his chest hmm. at night time, hmm. that is also important. Okay. In daytime, you, uh, uh, during examination, also, you, your chest might be completely clear, hmm. but at the night time, because it's an episodic disease, no? mm -hmm. some particular time there is uh, symptoms hmm. and daytime is normal. Hmm. So that history is very important. Hmm. You have to ask the parents uh, very particularly, okay. uh, is, is your child having night cough hmm. and uh, at what time uh, after s uh, sleeping? Suppose, okay. uh, not immediately after, hmm. in around 
midnight of early morning cough is more. That okay. is very important. That is typical mm. of asthma. Mm -hmm. And if associated wheezing is there, some mm. breathing difficulty is there. And cough is like that is continuous cough and mm. followed by a bouts of vomiting. Okay. That history is very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the back of that, if you are taking the good history mm. and uh, examination finding, mm. examination finding there might be some findings also, some, there might not be any finding also. Mm. There is hardly any role of investigations. Okay. Hardly any role of investigations mm -hmm. in asthma. Asthma is a clinical diagnosis. And you have to be very careful when you are talking to the parents, yes, isn't uh, it? Yes, you are very careful. Uh, mm. so suddenly you don't utter the word asthma. You will just take, elicit every history. And after that, you're taking history and good clinical examination, you're coming mm. to a diagnosis. After that, you'll have to do some, you can do some basic investigations, but investigations won't give you clues, okay? okay. So, you'll have to diagnose it clinically and mm. with good history. Okay. So, after taking that, uh, you can um, advise them that your might, child might, might be having this sort of problem. So, mm -hmm. and on the back of that, after that, you have to counsel that parents that even if it is asthma, it's not like that, it's a very dangerous disease. Okay. It's a very common disease. It's a common childhood disease, mm -hmm. and if it is occurring in early childhood, mm -hmm. the child might outgrow after five years. Okay. That message has to be given to the mm -hmm. parents. Suppose a three years old child coming, you repeated this one. After five years, he might outgrow these conditions, oh. and few few children they might not outgrow and they might manifest as continuous asthma disease. Okay. So, and uh, after deciding all this, you have to ask them what to, uh, mm. already pre uh, this uh, environmental control measures, mm. allergen avoidance measures already. Mm -hmm. uh, Make what, them understand yeah, what to do and wha what, what, to what, what, to do. what not to do. Mm -hmm. That has to be explained. Mm. And after that, this uh, mm -hmm. uh, medications, role of medication. Okay. So, doctor, if we talk about the school going children when yeah. they are going to their school, mm. so what kind of precautionary measures they can take? Because in break time, in their recess time, they mm. also go out and play. Okay. So, they have to be very careful if someone is facing mm. asthma. Mm. So, in that mode of time, like, can a children play? Can a children like go for like high activities and so sports activities? What would you suggest to those parents? Yeah, definitely they can be. It's not, mm. uh, um, but some some form of asthma there is called exercise induced asthma. Okay. So in that condition, before uh, taking exercise, before mm. doing exercise, mm. you can take some inhalers, mm. uh, one or two of the saline or like that salbutamol okay. inhalers, huh. and then child will be fine. And okay. Otherwise, it's child can do normal day-to-day -day activities, hmm. normal sports activities, whatever they want to. Oh, they okay. Can. okay. But your school authorities has to be informed. Okay. That okay. My, this my, my child is having this sort of problem. Mm -hmm. He is on. Uh, yeah, in, proper information should be uh, given that, to the school authorities very, yeah. as well. Doctor, in, we have a phone call. Yeah, we'll okay. discuss on that. Okay. Uh, hello, who's calling? Hello. Yeah, this is Priya. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Priya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, I wanted to know that uh, because I have. Uh, learned that like swimming can be a good uh, treatment for asthma but then some people again say that uh, because it is very like uh, it, it needs a lot of exercise also mm. so it's also very harmful so I, I just wanted to know like mm. it swim does swimming uh, it can swimming be a uh, cure to asthma or is it like more harmful yes. to do swimming because uh, there are contradictory statements on this thing so I just wanted to know like uh, if it's harmful or if it's useful for asthma patients all right thank you for calling okay yeah. Thank yeah. you. Very, very good question. Very relevant questions. Hmm. There are some uh, uh, some form of uh, beyond medical hmm. beyond, beyond medical management. There hmm. are some form of management. Okay. Some exercise, hmm. yoga. Hmm. Those have definitely have some roles. Hmm. But thing is that uh, uh, regarding hundred percent cure, it's it's not there. Hmm. It's, it's not like that. It will cause hundred percent cure. But mm -hmm. swimming is a good exercise, definitely. Mm -hmm. And any form of lung exercise, mm -hmm. that is good. Okay. Doing doing pranayam, doing mm -hmm. yoga, mm -hmm. that is also which is of, very much yeah. in and which all the parents tell their children to do yes, yes. in a very initial yeah. stage as well. In swimming, the, you have you have uh, along with physical activities, you will have some lung exercise also. Mm -hmm. That is definitely beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, but few few articles recently published, uh, they, they they didn't get get so much of beneficial effects. So mm -hmm. that's why. Um, you might be confused, but definitely you cannot say that it doesn't have any role. Mm. Definitely it has role, mm -hmm. although it is not too much, but you can you definitely mm. swimming. Done in the proper yeah, time proper, with uh, the proper yeah. measures, what to, to be taken, yeah. isn't it? It has definitely a role. Mm -hmm. So it has like definitely. Yoga, yeah. Like yoga, uh, there are some controversial issues, but it, it has definitely some roles. Mm -hmm. Like physical activity is yeah. a very important because part in any our life. Because any form of breathing exercise any is good for lung. Right. Yeah. 
Okay. So if we talk about, like we were talking about the activities and to give a proper information to the school authorities yes, yes. that if your child is facing yes. uh, suffering, you don't have to be shy and tell them yes. that my child is fine because it will be a goodwill for their children. Yes, yes. Because they have to participate in some kind of activities. Yes. So for that, a precautionary measure should be taken up mm. and the principal or the school authorities will think twice to send those children for the other activities. But yes. it's not that they can't pa take participation. It's not, not like that. Okay. Again. And the thing is that the use of uh, some, some, some uh, if it is uh, uh, outside environment is not good, you can use mm -hmm. some good uh, face mask also you can use. Yeah, uh, which is like everyone is like allowed to take nowadays mm -hmm. and we have seen children taking face mask and parents are more precautioned uh, uh, to take their and children uh, some, care uh, of. Also some uh, activities in school authorities regarding those house do allergens, uh -huh. if it is some uh, some sort of uh, school is uh, some damn school, mm -hmm. it is leaky, some mm -hmm. fungus is there, those mm -hmm. things you can ask the authorities to take care of. Okay, okay, that because it's the life of your children, yes. you have yes. to take care no, of that as well. Be, so yeah. uh, what to do to keep control of asthma if we talk about that doctor, what are the things one should do to keep a control yeah. and to keep a check on it? To, uh, to, to have a good control of asthma, mm. number one is environmental control. Environmental control. And uh, that is allergen avoidance. Mm thing is that even if you are treating regularly, hmm. if you are not taking care of the basic things, okay. allergens, hmm. whatever um, uh, playing role, hmm. so your treatment does not have any value. Mm -hmm -hmm. So both has to be go side by side. Both has to be gone. Uh, it is not only the medicines, yeah. but also the other things you have to take yeah. care of. Environmental controls, control measures already have explained to you whatever, this the dust mite control, pollens mm. control, moles controls, cockroach mm. controls, pets mm. controls, mm -hmm. those has to be, those information has to be given to the parents, whatever possible, although mm. it is not 100 percent possible. But if you can reduce it to even 50 percent also, mm -hmm. this your load will be less. So ah. that is why those measures is very important. Okay. Along with that, mm. Pharmacotherapy, that is whatever medicines, hmm. medicines are very important. Okay. And these medicines, previously these medicines were not there. Hmm. And during that time, we used to lose many lives. Hmm. Now these medicines are available, but hmm. people are reluctant to take this. Hmm. That should not be, because hmm. those medicines used to come after a very long research, hmm. after some <coughs> painstaking effort of some individuals. Of so that is why those medicines hmm. have definitely very good role. Hmm. And even if side effects, are, these are very, very minimal side effects, very less side effects. Hmm. Because if you are not treating that patient at a proper time, hmm. the disease will kill you. Okay. And so that is why hmm. if you are taking a little bit of risk, hmm. that uh, inhalers, they have definitely a very good role. Hmm, hmm, and hmm. you have to continue, you have to be adherent to the treatment. Okay. And, uh, and it should not be stopped in the between. Yeah, you, you, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot sto stop stuff. like huh. that. Uh, for that stopping, you will have to have some good monitoring, hmm. uh, both in the clinically and both subjectively and objectively. Objectively by doing some lung function test okay. or uh, you can do some skin prick test also mm -hmm. uh, to see the sensitivity and all. Okay. So those has to be monitored very regularly okay. and after monitoring all, if you are subjectively you are fine, hmm. objectively your lung function is better, hmm. then you, what you can consider is you can decrease the dose. Okay. So doctor will talk on that, yeah. we will just take a phone call. Yeah. Uh, hello, who is calling? Uh, good afternoon. Ah, hello, Coxon. Yes. My daughter got asthma. Na kile lora to that transfer ho bade ni. Ki koi se? Ah, if the parents are uh, having asthma, ah. so the children might also get. So oh, what we were discussing oh, actually. Ah, okay. uh, already me kotha pati so itu bichor. Um, ete dekho actually mane family history tha kile direct na hoy, kintu gen gen genetic factor ta definitely tha ke. Aro genetic usually parents or thakile fam bachar hito mane jeito genetic part ata definitely role ata play kore. Gote ke bachar huar sans to besi thake. Normal bachar ata jodi huar sans to kam thake. Family isti both parents or thakile sixty percent bachar sans huar sans to besi thake. To hei karne directly transmit na holo indirectly through through genes transmit hobo pare. Okay. So we were discussing on yeah. that. We are we are like regularly telling on that yes. that parents the genetic has to be checked yeah. once and whenever yeah. parents comes to you, yes. so you take a proper history, history. Yes. of everything and not directly, yeah. but in some other yes, or yes. the other way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about the discussions like mm. uh, so. Uh, in, uh, hmm. this, uh, then uh, then after uh, allergen avoidance and environmental control measures, this hmm. pharmacotherapy. Okay. Now these are inhalers. Okay. These are basically steroid inhalers. Steroid inhalers. Okay. okay. Although it is steroid, it is in microgram dose, mm -hmm. not even in milligram dose. Okay. okay. But if you are not taking this one, no. But the name itself is so heavy <laughs> that people will yes. understand yeah. what kind of like thing doctor yes, yes. is suggesting us. Yes. Okay. It is. Uh, mm. It is very much safe drug, mm. and you can take very well, no problem. Mm. Uh, thing is that you will have to be very much compliant regarding this um, uh, use of medications. 
and this uh, suppose if you are not taking this inhaler regularly hmm. for each attack you have to take oral steroids okay so in that case oral steroids in milligram dose you have to take mm -hmm. its side effects are very very much high compared to this uh, inhaled steroids okay it's in there in microgram dose so you have to even if you are taking up to 5 years continuously mm. but if you are taking orally even 2 3 attacks of uh, asthma if you are taking oral medications this mm -hmm. 5 years cumulative effect will be same as 2 2 attacks mm -hmm. so how much safe it is okay so it's a very less side effects but the only thing is the monitoring of is very important, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. growth monitoring and all some okay. other forms, uh, eye checkup and all those are very important. Okay. And which are the number of ages which seen where you see this asthma is seen more? What are the kind of patients you see in your hospital, doctor? Yeah. Which is a certain age? Is it infants or the children in uh, studying in schools? Mm. What are the number of figures you see more mm -hmm. in yeah. infants or in the children? See, if it, is, uh, if it is less than one year, if mm. the symptoms are there, mm. we, uh, we cannot strictly said that is uh, asthma there mm -hmm. are some lots of other conditions okay. maybe related to heart conditions also mm -hmm. or some la other lung conditions mm -hmm. it might mimic asthma okay so so that's why mm -hmm. less than one year diagnosis of asthma is very much difficult mm -hmm. so you have to consider other conditions mm -hmm. because differential diagnosis is very important other mm -hmm. conditions might mimic this mm -hmm. asthma mm -hmm. so that's why we directly cannot say that side is having these uh, symptoms mm -hmm. is asthma so okay. to consider other factors but after one year mm. it's a little bit easy if it is okay. repeatedly these uh, symptoms are happening mm -hmm. with good positive findings positive mm -hmm. history then it's easy to find out easy, uh, easy to find out okay but what uh, we used to see up, uh, up to five years mm. because this airways whatever this lung airways uh, airways are there no mm -hmm. this is very much narrow okay so most of the syndromes used to have two three attacks of this uh, wheezing okay and that's why after five years this mm. uh, Airways are very much bigger, mm -hmm. so this, uh, so that's why there is increased chance of outgrowing after five years. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but if the side is definitely have strong atopy family history and uh, persistent symptoms after five mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. so we can consider this okay. at the end. And you were talking about asthma attacks. So, what is that, and like how it is important to take care of that as well? Yeah. So asthma attacks. It's basically. Uh, acute attack. It, okay. it may be milder in the milder form. Mm -hmm. if, if it is not treated, it might go into moderate to severe form. So is of that attacks. seen in children as well? Yes. Is that yeah, seen in children? It's very, very, very well seen in children. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The symptoms are basically. <coughs> we used to see that they are having uh, breathing difficulty. Most of the children used to have breathing difficulty and cough. Mm -hmm. There is increased respiratory effort. Okay. Increased effort of respiratory muscles. Mm -hmm. There is easy fatigability. Mm -hmm. There is some uh, sweating and all. Hmm. Sile might not speak even words yeah. also. Oh, okay. Though, so uh, uh, that's uh, in extreme form what used to see some hmm. bluish discoloration of the skin because of less oxygenation. Hmm. This nail beds and all leaves and all become bluish. So those are very severe form. Sometimes okay. on oscillation you might not hear any breath sounds. So much of spasm, so hmm. much of uh, severe is this diseases in that condition you might not hmm. hear any air entry also. That is a okay. very severe, acute severe attack. So, hmm. depending on that management, um, uh, management is that hospitalization and mm -hmm. then some uh, nebulization, some uh, steroids and all. Hmm. After the uh, after getting cure of this acute attack, the okay. cell has to be put on continuous prophylactic okay. steroid inhaler. Okay. So that there is no any further attack because mm -hmm. each and every attack what happened? Hmm. Suppose um, uh, I have developed first attack. Hmm. Again, if I develop second attack, no, hmm. every time my lung is getting Get damaged. Okay, okay. So that's why. So one has to be very careful yeah, with yeah. the attacks which they are getting and yes, yes. initially it should be like uh, treated and yeah. medicine should be taken on time. Yeah, yeah. So doctor, if anyone is taking a medicine for a longer time, does it going to affect the kidney as well or something kind of like side effects can be seen? So or is it safe uh, to take are those there, are, there are lots of studies, uh, mm. lots of studies, lots of people are doing studies uh, mm. um, uh, regarding long term use of inhalers. Mm. So in most of the studies what they used to see is that uh, their beneficial effects are much more compared to this small, small side effects. Okay. These side effects are very less because it's mm. we are using it in microgram doses. Mm -hmm. So very less side effects. Uh, mm. you know, sometimes in children, sometimes there might be a uh, few inch uh, shortness of height. Okay. Okay. Mm. But if the symptoms are more, if mm. the cell is getting more attacks, so in that mm. condition, height reduction is much more compared to use of this steroid. Okay. okay? Hmm. And sometimes mm, in long term use, sometimes in uh, eyes they might get uh, cataracts, hmm. in uh, older people some bone problems and all. Sometimes very rarely, mm -hmm. it's not so common, very mm -hmm. rarely. Even up to five years of use, this side effect is very less. Okay, okay. So, but the medicines work a lot. Yeah, medicine works a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, doctor, if you talk about the food habits, like hmm. one has to take care of 
very much about their food habits. Yes. Is it like necessary that one who is having asthma mm. should not go for cold items mm. or something like that? Any precautionary measures regarding the food, what they are taking, their diet plans? Yes, uh, definitely change of environment, change mm. of temperature definitely mm -hmm. play a role. And change of lifestyle, so, uh, we are having foods yeah. outside. So sudden, uh, sudden rise of temperature or sudden fall in temperature, mm. always that has to be avoided. Mm. Okay. Always there should be a balance. Okay. Okay. Uh, like that in a uh, very windy and, uh, um, environment or it is very, if it is uh, too much of dust outside, Mm. And in some certain cities, what used to get some pollen counts, mm -hmm. pollen counts. They used to um, uh, give some pollen counts. So okay. This much pollen are there in the air, ah. not in Guwahati, mm -hmm. like in, in metro cities like yeah, yeah. Mumbai, Delhi. Delhi they, they used to have some pollen counts. counts. Ha, ha, ha. So depending on that, uh, okay. one can uh, one can see whether I can go outside or not. Mm. If I go out, also yeah. have to take some precautions. Yeah, precautions. Okay. okay. So the, the, those things um, uh, is very important, mm. and uh, this uh, that's why. Uh, uh, pollen counts and the sense of this one that hmm. always has to be taken care of. Okay, okay. And one has to be like very careful with whatever things they are going through. Yes, yes. And if any kind of like confusions, I always tell the viewers every time in my show that if you have any kind of confusion regarding any kind of disease, rather whatever topic which we have taken today, you should always go and see a doctor and get a clear cat answers on your own. So doctor, on last note, yes. because we are short of time, so on last note, what would you like to tell the parents out there that you should not have any confusions and you should not be worried about mm. things and you should come up openly whatever your children is facing. Yes, yes. Isn't it? So please yes. tell that. The thing is that uh, uh, in our last few years of our practice, whatever we have seen, lots of this uh, allergy and asthma, silent allergy and asthma, these are coming very rapidly. So mm. it is a rapidly growing disease. So mm. you will have to be aware of this one. And uh, one thing is that uh, this allergic conditions it cannot be cured completely, mm. but it can be hundred percent control. Okay. And but regarding cure also, lots of research is going on. Mm. Some immunotherapy is coming out uh, nowadays. Mm. It has some uh, curative effects. Some used to claim that there is some curative effect. Mm. So you should not be fear of telling your uh, doctors or somebody that my child is having this problem. Mm. But uh, if you are telling your history, everything is properly, and if your diagnosis is proper, asthma is proper, it can be well controlled, and your child can live a very healthy life, a quality of life, and uh, including other children, uh, like other children, they can uh, they can lead a very healthy life, hmm. and they can have some other sports activities, everything they can. And regarding most of our things, just inhaler medications, there are lots of myths and uh, regarding these inhaler medications. But you should not be worried regarding this inner medications. These are very much safe, having in very minimal doses with hmm. very less and less side effects. Okay. If they have been given yeah. suggestion by the doctor, yes. they should also and go for it. And that has to be uh, hmm. continued regularly. You no, don't stop these medications by yourself. Hmm. If, if after your a proper advice from your physicians, you can uh, uh, he can stop or he can continue for a long time. So that's why you stick to the. Adherence is very important. Compliance of the medications is very important. Hmm. So those are the important things you have to uh, take care of. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor, for coming to our show. It was a privilege to have you, and we okay. had a good discussion. Yeah. I am short of time, but so many questions to ask on the topic it's because yeah. it's a never-ending topic, yes. and I'm sure the viewers who are watching our show must have got all your answers. And if any kind of like confusions you have, our show is on, and you can watch us again next Wednesday at 4 p.m. But with this, we have to come to the end of the show. We hope that we were able to answer all your queries in the best possible way and in our next episode we will be discussing on some other important health issues so if you have any queries do join us next wednesday at 4 p.m live till then stay healthy stay fit and keep watching northeast life goodbye